Greetings fencers, today we come to the last video on distance. We've gone through the beginning and the middle, and now come to the end of fencing. Now we get very little information in the old Zedo sources on the end of fencing. It mostly has to be inference, but there are a few lines throughout that give a bit of information. However, Joachim Meyer's 1570 Kunstes does give us insight into what this ending looks like, and some lines in 3227a that do help support them. Now first, I do want to say that the Wichtenauer translation and Jeffrey Forgang's translation are quite different sounding. Going line by line, they do state the same idea, but for consistency, I will be quoting the Forgang translation. And the black flies were really bad and still are. We had bugs inside our masks the whole time, so the footage is a little more rushed. The first thing Meyer says is the ending is the Abzug or Abzien, literally off pull or away pull, in English, withdraw. The end I call the withdrawal, which is how the combatant may cut away from his opponent without harm. So if we've entered the exchange, we've used the Vorschlag, the handwork, and the Nachschlag, and we still didn't hit, then we don't stay in distance and keep trying, but instead withdraw and try from a new onset or Vorschlag. You must always withdraw in one of these three ways, either before him, after him, or at the same time as him. If you want to withdraw before him, then see that you first crowd him and drive him up with your techniques to such a degree that he must go up to protect himself. Then while he tries to see what you plan to do next, strike through at once with the withdrawal cut. In a simplified term, it's withdrawing when they're blocking. If you pressure them and take the before, then when they parry and go in the after, you step back as you cut. It's like, instead of using your before ticket to strike in, you instead decide it's safer to step out. Here's an example where after my Nachschlag, I crowd him with pressure, and as his sword is pushed off to the side, I cut as I retreat. There are two ways Meyer describes for withdrawing after your opponent. First, when you wait for your opponent's withdrawal, and then as he cuts away from you, you chase him skillfully over his blade with your withdrawal. Now this can be as simple as when he withdraws, you just try and cut over as you withdraw, but that word chase is actually the word nachheisest, which most of you know is likely referring to the Hauptstücke concept, nachheisen, traveling after. So I see it as when his cut passes, then try and get one last cut attempt in as you withdraw cut. Second, when you acted as if you intended to withdraw before him, but hold back your cut artfully and without him realizing it, so that when he rushes after you, you let him miss with his cut and fall, so that you can cut after him over his weapon to the opening. This is making a conscious decision to get Nachaisen. We pull our cut so when he tries to intercept our withdraw cut, his sword falls to the ground, and we're able to either bind or cut using whatever work. This definitely feels riskier being in distance, but if you've already had a couple onset withdraws, you may be able to exploit it. There are a lot of different cuts and contexts this can be used in. And the third is withdrawing simultaneously. Then conduct yourself such that by stepping out, you always come over his blade with your cut. When he cuts away from his right side, you cut on his left side, and vice versa. This is the simplest concept, that you always cut opposite and step away to maximize safety. This gives you the center line and control and decreases the chance of a double hit. Here are some examples of withdraw cuts from tournaments. Nice. George is our big surprise. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh. What? In the intro in 3227A, we get a little bit of advice that sounds similar to this withdrawing concept. It takes away his will and causes him damage, when he cannot get away without being struck. However, you can get away before him. And we're told frequently to stay in motion, and always stay in motion, and don't hesitate when you begin fencing. Motus, the word alone, is the heart and the crown of all fencing. 
Here learn the Frequens Motus, which paralyzes your adversary. This constant motion is a big idea, likely utilizing onset and withdraw smoothly and continuously so you're not staying in range. There are hints at other types of endings, obviously killing your opponent is one. Rushing in and running through with sword takings and throws are others. Holding them in binds and dislocating, and beating them. Some of these are talked about as goals, i.e. endings, in other sources as well. Something I do want to bring up that plays a large role in training and the concept of withdrawing is this. There are multiple places in the sources where it talks about hitting, hurting, or wounding, or shaming your opponent and the fight continuing. If you can execute the setting on correctly, then he must balance or shift himself hard. It must allow you a wound. It is recorded and very possible that one may cut and hit his opponent and the fight continues, meaning there could be multiple onset and withdraws in a fight, something that doesn't get practiced when your opponent stops, when they're hit, or does a non-committal afterblow. One of the ways to train frequent motus and withdrawing is continuous fencing where you just assume that every hit was poor and not disabling. This way you have to actively try to withdraw against someone who, after being hit, may stay on the offensive, and you can actually have a chance to practice these Meyer withdraws. It's something that you do have to be experienced and have a good understanding of safety, sportsmanship, and limits. You don't want it turning into what Meyer describes as a mindless peasant's brawl. <laughs> just something to try out as a training tool. I don't have footage of it, so this is a continuous fencing match from Swordfish 2017. It's something I do want to practice more. So thanks for watching this series. I know it wasn't for everyone, but I liked going through the sources. I'll have other videos for the beginner level again, but there will still be some stuff like this for the analytical side. I wanted this to be more about what the old masters said and less about what I think. So there isn't a big conclusion with every distance. You could probably make the argument for like 10 different distances. That's definitely not Lichnauer's way, the guy who says only use 5 cuts, 4 guards, and 3 wounds. I would still generally speak in the 4 distances in my live talk video, but it's still important to practice with the knowledge of these other distances that affect what you may or may not be able to do at a given distance. Keep an eye out for my distance management drills video. Thanks for watching, keep studying, keep practicing.